Hi there. Next Friday starts Sunny Balwani's trial, and I thought it would be very helpful to take a look at the charges he faces. They are the exact same charges that Elizabeth Holmes faced. Hi there, I'm Michelle Hagan. I'm a legal analyst and a former prosecutor, and I provided a lot of legal analysis on the Elizabeth Holmes case. So I thought it would be helpful to you to go over the indictment. This is the charging documents against Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani, letting them know what the government was charging them with. They are charged with 11 counts of wire fraud. So here's the indictment. I'll go through it with you, point out some important areas. So United States of America versus Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani, third superseding indictment, meaning it's the third version. They made some changes. And the charges were recommended by the grand jury. See, so it says grand jury here, and the prosecutor is prosecuting it, the U.S. attorneys. It's filed July 28th in Northern District of California, that's in San Jose, California gives you introductory allegations, basically telling you that Elizabeth Holmes was CEO of Theranos. Sonny Balwani was COO of Theranos. It's a Delaware corporation doing business in Palo Alto. What, did, what was the business of Theranos? A private healthcare and life sciences company. Basically, it was a blood testing company. And then it tells you the 10 years between 2003 and 2013, they were in stealth mode. In other words, they were working out the technology running their clinical tests before they rolled it out to the public approximately 2013. I'll try to go slow here so you can read through this. Talks about them promoting it, uh, articles being in the uh, Wall Street Journal, their partnership with Walgreens, where they launched their wellness centers in Walgreens in Palo Alto and in Arizona. Now this talks about paragraph 11, the scheme to defraud investors. Beginning in 2010, the government alleges that Holmes and Balwani made materially false and misleading statements in their written and verbal communications, the marketing materials, and in their financial statements and in statements to the media. And in particular, the government alleges in paragraph A that they represented that their Edison, their mini lab was capable of accomplishing accurate and reliable tests. When the government says in truth, Holmes of Balwani knew that their Theranos analyzer had accuracy and reliability problems. They also represented to investors in paragraph B that they were Theranos was in a financially strong and stable company when the government says that Holmes of Balwani knew that they would only generate modest revenues. Then paragraph D. They deceived investors by misleading technology demonstrations. They basically gave fake demos to the investors. Paragraph D, they represented that they had an expanding partnership with Walgreens when in fact, or in truth, the government says that Holmes of Balwani knew by late 2014 that the Walgreens rolled out had stalled. Paragraph E, they represented that Theranos had a profitable and revenue generating business relationship with the US Department of Defense. When in truth, the government alleges that Holmes and Balwani knew that they had limited revenue and the technology was not deployed in the battlefield. Paragraph F. Holmes and Balwani represented to investors that Theranos did not need the FDA approval. 
when in truth, Holmes and Balwani knew by late 2013, the FDA was requiring Theranos to apply for clearance and approval of their analyzer and tests. Paragraph F represented that the investors, Holmes and Balwani represented that to investors that Theranos conducted their test on Theranos analyzers. When in truth, Holmes and Balwani knew that Theranos purchased and used third party commercial analyzers. Paragraph H, Holmes and Balwani represented to investors that Theranos technology had been examined, used and validated by several national and multinational pharmaceutical companies and research institutions. When in truth, Holmes and Balwani knew that the pharmaceutical companies and research institutions had not examined and validated the test, uh, technology. Paragraph H, Holmes and Balwani represented to members of the media many false and misleading statements. And they shared articles with the potential investors, both directly and via Theranos website, knowing these statements to the media were false and misleading. After receiving, paragraph 13, after receiving false and misleading statements, Holmes and Balwani no, um, it Holmes and Balwani initiated electronic wire transfers for purpose of investing money in Theranos. In other words, they received all this money from investors who invested in Theranos. Then they talk about the prosecution is a scheme to defraud patients. Now, Elizabeth Holmes wasn't convicted of any of these charges. She was convicted of the scheme to defraud investors, both as a conspiracy with Balwani and with four counts of fraud against the investors, defrauding investors. So regarding the scheme to defraud patients, paragraph 14, between 2013 and 2016, Holmes of Balwani, through advertising and solicitations, encouraged and induced doctors and patients to use Theranos blood testing labs. They devised a scheme to defraud patients using marketing materials, advertisement, saying that Theranos technology was accurate, fast, and reliable, and cheap blood results. And they made omissions concerning the limits and the problems with Theranos technology. Based on these representations, hundreds of patients paid Theranos and Walgreens acting on behalf of Theranos. Paragraph 16, despite representing to doctors and patients that Theranos could provide accurate and fast and reliable and cheap blood tests, Holmes and Balwani knew through their involvement with day-to-day -day operations at Theranos and the complaints that they received from doctors and patients, that Theranos technology was in fact not capable of consistently producing accurate and reliable results. Holmes and Balwani knew that they couldn't provide consistent, accurate, and reliable results containing certain blood tests. I'll let you go ahead and read all these different blood tests, everything from HIV to potassium, to vitamin D, testosterone, et cetera. Paragraph 17, despite their knowledge of Theranos accuracy and reliability problems, Holmes and Balwani used electronic wires to purchase. One of the counts is re regarding their advertising campaign. So they used electronic wires. That's why it's a wire fraud case to purchase advertisements intending to induce individuals to purchase Theranos blood tests at Walgreens stores in California and Arizona. Again, they made all these statements. I'll let you go ahead and read all this regarding it being inaccurate and unreliable results, improperly adjusting reference ranges, improperly removed critical results and results generated from improperly validated assays, the blood tests. Paragraph 18, knowing that they had accuracy and reliable, uh, knowing that the accuracy and reliability of Theranos tests was questionable and suspect, 
Holmes and Balwani oversaw the electronic wiring and test results to several patients, including patients BB, ET, and ME. And I'll talk to you about that when we get to the counts. So count one is a conspiracy to defraud investors. Elizabeth Holmes was found guilty of this. Sonny Balwani, what's his defense gonna be on this? So count two, Com conspiracy to commit wire fraud against Theranos patients. Elizabeth Holmes was found not guilty of defrauding patients. Let's see what happens to Sonny. If you remember in the Elizabeth Holmes trial, she pointed the finger at Sonny Balwani regarding the patients. He was the one who was responsible for the lab. And several witnesses said that Sonny Balwani did oversee the labs. Does that mean that he's gonna be on the hook for defrauding the patients? We'll see what happens in the trial. You can go ahead and read this. Counts three through eight were the wire fraud counts relating to the investors. And I went through some of this in one of the prior videos I did about, will Elizabeth Holmes have to pay $144 million? Well, here are the investors and I'll just, review what happened in the Holmes case. On count three, four, and five, Elizabeth Holmes was, uh, the jury was not able to come back on a decision. So it was a hung jury, counts three, four, and five, but she was convicted of count six, seven, and eight. Count six, seven, and eight uh, was approximately $144 million. That relates to Investor three, which is count six, is the Brian Grossman, the PFM Health Sciences Fund. The count seven was investor four, was the DeVos family. Count eight was investor five, was the attorney Brian, I'm sorry, attorney uh, David Mosley. Count three that the jury couldn't decide on in the Holmes case was uh, relating to Alan. Ooh, his name just slipped me. Hang on a second. Eisenman? Yeah, I think it's Eisenman. Let me check my notes here. I'm sorry about this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's Alan Eisenman. He's the one that had the quarterly phone calls with Elizabeth Holmes. Jury was not decided. So she wasn't convicted of count three. Count four. Count four related to Craig Hall. The $5 million, um, I'm sorry, it's Chris Lucas. Count for is Chris Lucas uh, regarding the Black Diamond Ventures Fund. That was 5 million. The jury did not come back. They were undecided on count four. Count five relates to Brian Tolbert. He testified regarding the 4.8 million. Uh, the jury did not come, by, come back on that decision either, but they did convict Elizabeth Holmes of six, seven, and eight of defrauding investors. And they did find that she was a co-conspirator with Sonny Balwani, and they found her guilty of count one, the conspiracy charge. Okay, counts nine through 12 deal with the patients. Did Sonny Balwani and Elizabeth Holmes defraud the patients? Well, count nine relates to a patient who got a blood result in Arizona, and I think his name was Brent B uh, Bills Billsley. I'm not sure, I don't remember his name. I'm sorry about that. I don't have my notes in front of me on him. Anyway, count nine was thrown out in the Elizabeth Holmes case because the prosecution, it was delayed discovery. They didn't turn over his blood. Actually, they made a mistake. They turned over the wrong blood result for him. So it was thrown out because the defense did not get the uh, discovery of the blood result regarding this charge. So count nine was dismissed. Count 10, 11, and 12, the jury did hear testimony uh, regarding those counts. Count 10 relates to Erin Tompkins. She got the, uh, the false miscarriage test. We're called the false, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I have to change that. Aaron Tompkins was the false HIV test. And the jury did not convict Elizabeth Holmes of this. But again, keep in mind, the evidence may show that Sonny Balwani was responsible for this charge. We will see. 
Can 11 deals with patient ME. And patient ME is Merrill Ellsworth. It's a dentist from Arizona who used the Theranos blood test and he was given his blood results and he was given a false prostate cancer result, which in the Elizabeth Holmes case, they did not come, they did not find her guilty of that. Question is, will they find Sonny Balwani guilty of that charge? Count 12. Count 12 deals with um, the media campaign from Horizon Media. They were paid um, $1.1 million from Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos, Holmes and Balwani from Theranos to purchase an advertising campaign for the Theranos Wellness Center. So again, that was money that was wired to from Theranos to Horizon Media to purchase an advertising campaign for the Theranos Wellness Centers. Count 12, Elizabeth Holmes was found guilty of. All of these counts, nine through 12, Elizabeth Holmes was found not guilty of. We'll see what happens with, I should say, let me correct, count nine, it was dismissed. But counts 10, 11, and 12, Elizabeth Holmes was found not guilty of those charges. Let's see what happens to Sonny Balwani. Okay, the forfeiture allegation relates to any proceeds that you get from committing fraud, you have to forfeit. That's basically what that says. Elizabeth Holmes will have to forfeit any sum or money where she received the proceeds of uh, regarding any money transferred, sold, or deposited with a third person any money placed without jurisdiction, uh, beyond the jurisdiction of the court, et cetera. You can go ahead and read this. So anything, she has to forfeit any assets that were the proceeds of the fraud because she was convicted of these counts, several of these counts. Now, if Sonny Balwani is convicted, same thing's gonna happen to him. He'll have to forfeit, forfeit any assets. Okay, this is signed by the US attorney. And then I will show you these two. These two documents relate to uh, the offense charging. And if you wanna go ahead and look at this, I will show you, I'm gonna keep scrolling down here. Um, and this is also Sunny Balwani, but I wanted to back up here and show you, if you look to see what the penalty is, right? The penalty says all per count. So it's 20 years per count, $250, $250,000 fine per count, three years supervised release, $100 special assessment per count and the forfeiture allegation. And they're all charged as felonies. Then we'll go to the one against Sonny here. Here's Sonny Balwani's. Same charges, conspiracy, wire fraud, and forfeiture. Same penalty, 20 years. Per count, $250,000 fine per count, three years supervised release, $100 special assessment, plus uh, likelihood of restitution on all of these. Talks about whether he was, they were both out on bail. And you can go ahead and read this. So that is the indictment that tells you what the charges are that Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani face. And I'll do a video on. You know, what happens? What happens to Elizabeth Holmes if Sonny Balwani gets convicted of any of these charges? So I hope this has been helpful to you. Please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you very much for subscribing. Please do send your comments and your questions and your ideas for any upcoming videos. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for watching.